I know it's crazy out there. I don't know how many of you guys are actually gonna uh, join me here, but it's, uh, well, welcome some of you guys are here. Um, all right, couple things. Let's not go crazy on the questions. If I don't get to your question, I'm gonna try to read them in order. So if you ask it eight times, I don't think that's gonna help. Uh, so we'll get to that momentarily. Uh, but anyway, the world is absolutely batshit right now, uh, which is what you came here to hear. Uh, but here's the good news. Uh, it will at some point get to normal. If it takes five years or something, it will get back to normal at some point. And we're going to need entertainment. We're going to need therapy. We're going to need all these uh, good things uh, that uh, hypnosis offers. So uh, anyway, we're back. Uh, I, we, last time, uh, last week, we had a really great uh, Facebook Live. It was a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of viewers that came on, lots of questions. Hopefully, I can get to a lot of questions here this time. But again, it's an ask me anything. So we're just going to have a good time. All right, uh, Jimbo Fox, is this going to take long? Not as long as last week. Uh, last week I talked for a half an hour, uh, This, or sorry, an hour. This time I want to keep it to 30 minutes. So, all right, question is, can I hypnotize us out of this mess? I can hypnotize you to make you think that you're not in this mess anymore, but I think we're in the thick of it. Uh, shit is hitting the fan and um, the world is shutting down. Um, and, uh, and rightfully so. Uh, the coronavirus stuff, uh, I think the president's talking right now, but you're better to be here anyways because... Uh, he's just going to mess it up and make it worse. So anyway, uh, it's been uh, crazy to hear what's out there. I was traveling this week. Uh, I feel fine currently, but that's no guarantees that I'm not going to feel uh, the effects of coronavirus. I think uh, a lot of us will. Um, so take the right precautions, do the right things, wash your, wash your, wash your hands, and be smart out there. Anyway. All right. Uh, can I, uh, hello from Southern Alberta, uh, storm advisory here. Mother Nature is forcing us to self-isolate. I think uh, Mother Nature uh, is the least of our worries um, with the uh, coronavirus coming up. Anyway, I'm doing well, thank you. Um, can you wish me a happy birthday for tomorrow? Uh, yeah, happy birthday. Um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, it would have been really cool for you to be on Friday, March 13th. I mean, I'm getting ready for St. Patrick's Day with my uh, Lucky Charm shirt. But. Uh, can I wait to get back to Vegas? Currently, Vegas is doing shows. Uh, I don't know how long that's going to last. Um, I think we're kind of waiting to hear what the city's going to do. Obviously, shows don't want to shut down. People still want to be entertained. But at some point, it becomes a social responsibility. I think it's coming. Um, but I'm on stage tomorrow night. And Sunday, I don't know what's going to happen after that. But schools are still in here. Uh, Nevada's not hit anywhere near as hard as some of the other areas. But I can't imagine that it's not going to be uh, happening sooner than later. All right, coming some in Sunday the 22nd. Hopefully they don't cancel our flight from Elvis, Saskatchewan. Uh, yeah, fingers crossed. What do I think about everyone panic buying? I think it's a natural thing uh, that everyone's doing because obviously emotion, you know, behaviors are all influenced by emotions. Everything we do has an emotional reason as to uh, why the behavior. So the fear of loss is a greater motivator than the opportunity for gain. That's something you need to remember. The fear of loss is a greater motivator than the opportunity for gain. So it's not that people feel like they need to get the stuff. It's the fear of, well, if I don't get it and what happens later if I can't get it? And I feel like everyone else is reacting around me. So I need to panic and, and buy things as well. So it's a natural thing. It's, it's hard for us to, uh, to stop that behavior because of how it's driven. It's driven by fear. Um, so, but I mean, be smart out there, you know, get the necessities that you need. And, and, you know, people, I read an article from some medical uh, professionals that uh, basically said that you want to make sure you have some flu medication like Dayquil, NyQuil, that kind of stuff uh, to help regulate, uh, you know, flu symptoms. But um, anyway, that's, I'm not an expert on that. Uh, uh, hello, hello. A whole bunch of people can, uh, can you make me answer my cell phone shoe again? Well, you know, they've upgraded, uh, you know, Blackberries are out of the picture now. Uh, cell phone shoes are out of the picture now, Scott. So you can now upgrade to uh, iPhones. And so <laughs> we uh, may, may not happen again. Um, so, uh, all right. Makes me feel like uh, dating your last said, Drew says, living in the mess of coronavirus makes me feel like I'm dating my last three ex girlfriends all at once. <laughs> uh, same kind of financial ruin, I'm sure. Uh, pretty quiet on the strip. It is pretty quiet. Um, it is, uh, crowds are getting a lot, um, a lot smaller. Um, have I can consider performing in Toronto? Yes, I have. I have done a lot, actually, in the years past. Just nothing in the nearest future booked. I've uh, been very passionate, 
passionate about hockey and Star Wars and very interested in Game of Thrones. Where does passion for that come from? It comes from you, Keith. You bought me a nice little letter opener that was a Game of Thrones thing. I wasn't even into it. And then all of a sudden I became hooked. So it's funny you bring up the hockey thing. Um, I got a bunch of messages that a lot of the local Vegas people were really pissed off that uh, I didn't say that I was cheering for the Golden Knights. Uh, right now, there's no season, so it doesn't really matter who I'm cheering for. But I am a Golden Knights fan. Uh, Shea Theodore is part of the family. Um, we have uh, part of our family married into into that side of the family. So uh, Shea and, and his girlfriend Mariana are nice, and uh, we exchange texts once in a while. And I have a Theodore jersey that I wear to the Golden Knights games. And I said, well, I'm an equally a fan of the Golden Knights and the Oilers. And my partner, Kate, said, no, you are not. You're, you lean to the Oilers uh, and you're much more an Oilers fan than you are a Golden Knights fan. I'm like, no, I think I, I watch an equal amount of games. She goes, no, the difference is when you watch Golden Knights games, you sit on the couch and you watch the games. I'm like, yeah. And she goes, but when you watch the Oilers play, you stand in front of the TV. And that's why I know it's different for you. And I'm like, yeah, I guess I suppose that's true. So anyway, I'm an Oilers fan, but also cheer for the Golden Knights. Uh, happy birthday to some people. Hey, birthdays. Your husband's birthday was today. Uh, that's exciting. Um, Am I going to bring back the hypno joint? That's actually a great question. I do the hypno joint uh, quite often uh, in the show still when time allows. I'm only allowed to do an hour and 15 minutes because Vegas has this whole thing that they don't want people in showrooms. They want them gambling. So they need to come in and they need to get out so we, they can take your money. Go figure. And uh, so if I have a little time, I'll do the hypno joint. But every minute that I'm past an hour and 15 minutes, I get penalized financially. So they duck to the show. That's a true story. Uh, so, you know, doing the show for an hour and 25 minutes costs me money. So I try to keep it an hour 15 as best I can. Uh, question. Uh, curious is asked to how they pick, how do you pick people from the stage if they raise their hands and they have been on stage with you before? Do you try not to pick them just so you have mostly newbies? Uh, yeah, most of the time it is newbies. However, it does happen on occasion that someone will participate. They come to the show. They like the show. Oh my God, it felt great. It was funny. And that was a great feeling. And they'll come back a year later because they have an annual trip to Vegas and they'll volunteer again. And, you know, so for me, for them, it was one show ago. For me, it was 300 shows ago. So it's hard sometimes to remember who's been on stage before and who hasn't. Uh, so sometimes I, I have no idea. And they'll come up to me after and go, hey, I did it with you last year. Oh, great. And there's no real way to know that. Uh, so there's also people who come like every year and they're hypno junkies just because they get hypnotized easily. And often, you know, doesn't mean anything other than the fact that they like hypnosis and they want to participate. But people think, oh, well, hey, I've seen that guy on stage before. It's set up. I never use paid actors, never use stooges or shills or set it up in any capacity whatsoever. Uh, you know, so that just doesn't happen, you know. And if you think of what it would take, people are like, oh, hypnosis is fake and they're all paid actors. Just take a moment to pull your head out of your ass, first thing, and think about what it would take to orchestrate something like that. I would have to get, you know, 20 people or 10 people and say, okay, you guys are the people that are gonna fake hypnosis. Here's the script, here's what I want you to do. And then at the end of that, don't tell anybody and keep it hush hush and right, but you guys gotta fly in from different parts of the country in order to make this happen. For 13 years, 3,500 shows times 10 pe people hypnotized a show. Come on, get real. It's, it, first off, it's a natural phenomenon. You don't need to set it up or have paid actors. Two, just think of what it would take to actually do. So it makes no sense. Um, so they're all real people every night. Uh, and if you've been to the show multiple times, you'll say that it's, um, you know, different. Uh, even though the show's the same, people respond to suggestions differently. And uh, so yeah, it's quite obvious that they're new people each night. So uh, putting on a show in Canada, not currently. Um, I don't have anything planned. Um, uh, Steven says, frustrated when we are together because I'm usually the funniest person in the room. And with you, it's not the case. Oh, I'll keep up the great work. Thank you. Thank you. You're actually a very funny guy, Stephen, and uh, I, I enjoy hanging out with you. We need to do it more. Uh, sorry to hear about your divorce. Been there, done that. Did you get to keep the Tesla? Um, actually, no, I got rid of the Tesla and then went to a Maserati afterwards. So, uh, and I do miss the Tesla, so I might get one again. But um, sorry to hear about the divorce. Thank you. But that's, uh, you know, sometimes people never know. Like whenever someone tells me, hey, you know, heard that you got divorced. I am so sorry. Or, or I always say this. They say, hey, I'm not. I'm divorced now. My response is, I never know if I should say congratulations or I'm sorry to hear that. 
And then the person usually responds, hey, no, congratulations, high five. Or they'll say, yeah, it's unfortunate and stuff. But in my case, um, it's you know, fairly neutral. Obviously, uh, it, it's an emotional thing that, you know, there's a lot of emotions. It's a heavy thing that you go through, uh, but you end up better at the, at the tail end of it. And that's the, the entire point. So uh, have you in the history of performing stage hypnotism had a dead show? Uh, like no one stayed under. If so, how did you deal with it? If not, did you ever come close to and explain how you dealt with it? All right, well, first off, um, I picked on this last time, um, and it better not have been you, Andre, that said it, uh, un under. I don't use the term under because you're never under hypnosis. Hypnosis, in, the word under implies an external force that comes in and that people are under your control. It's not like that. Hypnosis is a state of mind that you are into. It is uh, something that you enter and when you come out of hypnosis, you emerge from hypnosis. So it's not under. Um, but I'm a stickler about that. I might be the only one still trying to change that and nobody gives a shit. But help me, it's not under, it's into hypnosis. That's the first thing. Second. No, someone's been hypnotized in every single show I've ever done except for one. And it wasn't because it was a dead show or because they weren't hypnotizable. It was actually, I was performing in the Crow's Nest Pass in Alberta, Canada. And there's this little tiny venue. Uh, and uh, this was years ago. And I'm performing and doing the show. And it's hot. It was, you know, spring or late spring or early summer. They had the doors open. Well, about 60 feet away from behind the venue is a train track. And the train comes barreling down, comes barreling down uh, this uh, right next to the building and lays on the horn as it comes in. And it's so loud and it absolutely wakes everyone from hypnosis during the hypnosis process. And it was comical, really. And then uh, we took a little bit of a break. Okay, we're going to take a break. We're not going to, you know, we're going to get into hypnosis again. Let's just take a 25. Five minute break, 30 minute break, get, grab your drinks in the bar and whatever. And then we did it again and start doing the induction and the train comes back. It comes back and lays on the horn in the middle of the induction. And it was like, it was comical. And there was other things happening, a band and whatever. And then, you know, some people were left and it, it was just comical. So it ended up that we just said, ah, screw this, screw it. We're not going to do a show. And it was the bigger beginning of my career. They didn't pay me that much to begin with, but that's sort of where it happened. But uh, okay, so um, let's see. I have some old questions from my my uh, making some noise here from my laptop uh, from last week. I was hoping to get some of those, but it sounds it looks like you guys are asking all kinds of questions uh, that I don't know if I'm ever going to get to these ones, which is good. It's great. Uh, Hypnotizing fools to wash the hands. Yes. Uh, do you know when people aren't hypnotized? There's a couple of things that happen. Great question, uh, Demi. Uh, what happens is. There's, first off, you can kind of tell by how they're looking at you or at me as a hypnotist. People who are hypnotized tend to really want to track the movements. The second thing is I do a lot of the first couple of routines with their eyes closed. And the reason for that, and we talked about this last week, is that people who aren't hypnotized have this drive of not wanting to be found out. So they tend to open their eyes and see what everyone else is doing before they respond. So they're trying to not get caught. That's, the, that's one of the things. Second thing is I have a lot of comedy that happens in my show. And someone who's hypnotized, so I have some specific jokes at the beginning of what's ha what I'm doing at the, at the show. And I guess that the, um, the, the drive or the, the, what I'm trying to achieve is in the orchestra when I do the you know, you're playing with your butt and you're doing the certain things. So there's, as I'm going through the suggestions, someone who's hypnotized won't necessarily find those types of things funny. They'll just do the behavior. Where someone who's not hypnotized and the conscious mind is participating, they'll tag onto the joke or they'll link onto the joke and realize that that's funny and they'll cause laughter. So when people laugh in hypnosis, it's totally allowed. But the audience thinks, oh, that person's laughing, they're not hypnotized. But if the person who's hypnotized thinks that, let's say they're full of ants and they're itchy, the guy next to them can look at him and, and think that that's funny. It's totally okay. But when the joke, for example, I say a Bill Cosby joke, I say the sleep dust, right? Put on the sleep dust. This is, oh, you know, this very powerful stuff. It knocks them out. I get it from Bill Cosby. The audience laughs at the joke, but the hypnotized participants usually don't. Because that joke requires some conscious thought in order to recognize why it's funny. So when they laugh is more important than if they laugh. Because hypnotized people can laugh. 
when they're laughing tells me which part of their mind is responding, if that makes sense. All right. Um, I have to tell my wife, uh, different times my wife, two fingers getting closer, tighter sleep. I'm not sure what you're trying to say here, uh, what you did with your two fingers with your wife, but this is not an adult Facebook live. So let's just move along. Uh, I was on your stage uh, in 2018 and wish you would do a tour of Canada in the summer months, obviously. Well, I'm from Canada, so I'm used to winter and summer, but um, maybe I will do another Canada tour, maybe at some point. Um, maybe if this coronavirus shuts down all of Vegas, maybe I'll need somewhere to go. My little sister's here. Uh, all right. Uh, hi from Alberta. Is the COVID-19 affecting shows in Vegas? Yes. Uh, visitorship is down. Uh, show schedules are being, you know, adjusted. I might actually uh, adjust some of my uh, scheduling as well and do less shows. Um, but it looks like uh, we're probably going to be globally restricting a lot of things. So there might be some changes happening in the next few days. Vegas seems to be a little far behind um, in uh, coronavirus uh, outbreak. There's not doesn't seem to be as many, but I think it's all coming. You know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if everything shuts down for a while, uh, which brings me and I'm teaching a class and people have been asking, are you still teaching the class as of right now? Yes. We've also offered a live stream version of the class. So you don't have to come, but you can live stream in and I've never done this. And I want to make sure that because those of you who know me know that I really want to under promise and over deliver. And because of that, I've been working on the class and we're going to make it better. Actually, we're going to make it better. And, I, and I'm considering actually moving the hypnotherapy class if we're going to go to live streaming earlier on, in the schedule and getting the information early because people are going to need hypnotherapy. They're going to need stress management. They're going to need help with dealing with some of the things that they're going to be going through. Unfortunately, we may have some, you know, a lot of uh, loss of life with the coronavirus. So people are going to want to deal with um, morning and sometimes uh, hypnotherapy can be a very, very effective tool for that. Uh, so again, uh, I want to kind of get the information out there sooner than later and obviously ramping up and offering a whole bunch of other cool things with the live streaming for the stage hypnosis class. It's going to be better than I've ever taught it because I, I want to make sure that people get the money's worth. Uh, and I, I want to make sure that we get some training to the people who want to make this world a better place once we get on the other side of this. So, um, Kate uh, says that it took you about watching 20 plus shows before I volunteered. And I know, um, Kate Bevan Marks, that we talked about this, and you learned more about hypnosis by being in the show and hypnotized to get the experience of what that was like than you did all of your trainings. And I know we talked about that, and I think it's very important. Every hypnotist should be hypnotized to see what that feels like. Uh, all right, um, Gary's asking, have you hypnotized someone uh, then be totally afraid of them, like Crystal. <laughs> Maybe just kidding uh, about her. She, no, I'm. I never. Even though people are hypnotized, they don't become absolutely crazy where they want to hurt you. There's that subconscious watchdog that kicks in that says, "Hey, um, we're not going to be obviously." Uh, you know, there's something that stops them from injuring, uh, like almost like a nightmare. The subconscious watchdog works when we're regular to sleeping, and you have this nightmare that starts stressing your body. What happens? You wake up. When it's too much, you wake up. Same thing happens in hypnosis when you stress the body and you tap into those emotions in some capacity that's too much, the person emerges from hypnosis. Uh, how do you make sure the therapeutic change will last longer than just the session? Well, LA, that's a great question. A matter of fact, there's many different things. I'm not a fan of 99% of hypnotherapists and how they tackle uh, their hypnotherapy sessions. Most of it's direct suggestion. I teach a bunch of different techniques um, that are, that the results of them are absolutely amazing. One technique is transforming therapy. And on my YouTube channel, I think we posted a couple of months ago, it's about me working with a lady with the cat phobias. And it's got a combination of a whole bunch of things that happen. Age regression, you know, gestalt dialoguing, you know, resolution to initial, initial sensitizing event. There's so many different techniques that happen in the, that type of therapy that is second to none. And that's why uh, that type of hypnotherapy that I teach blows the others out of the water. So the result, and there's other things you could do in the session that will enhance um, the therapy session. Now, a couple of things you want to keep in mind when you're dealing with hypnotherapy, 
When the suggestions are positive, they tend to last longer than negative suggestions. And based, just think of it of, of a show sequence. Uh, when I'm hypnotizing someone to do a name change where they think their name is different, and all of a sudden I tell them your name is Bob, but their name really is Frank. When they go home, people in a position of power, such as you know their parents or their spouse or their kids or whoever's continually calling them Frank, would wear out the suggestion of their name being Bob because it's constantly being resisted upon by people that they value and their opinion that they value and what's important to them. Whereas if I were to tell them they have self-confidence and they feel great and the people around them and they enjoy their lives and their whatever and when people are talking to you, they like you and you sense that and you feel that, that that doesn't get challenged so that suggestion tends to last a lot longer. So how you structure the suggestion will determine the effect that people get from that. All uh, right, I'm, I know this skipped up, okay. Um, I'm so, okay, I'm trying to get caught up. I'm missing some, I'm so sorry. My phone just kind of reset here. Um, okay. Would it be possible to set up a one-on-one -on -one with you in Vegas? I haven't been taking any clients for one-on-one, -on -one, James. Uh, lately my schedule just been, been swamped. That may change, I mean, I might not be doing shows in Vegas, so my schedule may free up. Uh, so I might be taking on some one-on-one -on -one clients. I, all, my, my partner, Kate, also does one-on-one -on -one clients and she is taking clients and she's awesome. And she, in some cases, she's actually better than I am at the therapy. She's really good. Uh, so email my office and we'll get you her contact info. Uh, so email info at marksavard.com and we'll get you her info, uh, her info when she does uh, Skype sessions and she's really good. Okay. Um, you shake your guest hands to get them to do things. Are you gonna change that up at all? It's a great question, Auntie Stacy, although you're not my Auntie Stacy, but I'll treat you as such. Listen here, Auntie. Uh, basically, what I do is I've changed, so now the suggestion, I'll touch them on the shoulder. I'm not shaking hands, I haven't been connecting, not because I'm worried, I just wanna you know, be respectful and be socially responsible for their well-being. So I've modified that, so I haven't been doing any hand-to-hand -hand contact. And when I, um, say, hey, you're not hypnotized, and head back to the audience, you should grab them by the shirt and just pull them out of their chair. No, I don't do that, but uh, yeah, the last couple of shows, I have not been doing that. Uh, Debbie says, Mark, you rock. Uh, well, I agree, thank you. Do I like animals? How about cougars? Ooh, <laughs> uh, that's funny. Uh, I do like animals, uh, but I don't have any. They're all at my exes and with the kids, and I like them over there. I like, I'm, I'm a neat freak and I don't have them in my house. Okay, uh, great show, good show, thank you, thank you. Saw that one was awesome. Do you hypnotize children to get them to clean their room? Uh, yes, I hypnotize children. Do I hypnotize my children to clean their room? I'm not a miracle worker, little shits. Uh, Leah says the cat phobia session was mind blowing. Yes, you were there. I made you reevaluate your entire life. Uh, you were not doing hypnotherapy. You took a break from it. And after seeing that, you know, I told you, I said, you're doing people a disservice. Get back out there and, and you've been kicking ass and taking names since. I'm happy to see that. Uh, could you hypnotize someone to thinking they're, they are Mr. Trump? I would never do something so horrible as that. You heard it here. Not a fan. All right. <laughs> If you, meet, uh, if you meet someone from your show a week later and shake their hands, will they still have the same reaction, like love or hate? It can happen. Uh, and it has happened in some cases that sometimes they'll have a little bit of a, a, an extra effect that uh, the suggestion will stay on for a little longer. There's no danger, though. Uh, just curious, how come you're not doing any more shows? I am doing more shows. Um, okay, hi, hi, hi. True story, can we see a show again in October? Okay, I think I'm caught up on the messages here. Um, I follow you for like nine years and still love what you do. Well, thank you, Demi. That's very, very nice. Uh, where were you the first four years when I opened in Vegas? No, that's fine. I appreciate your nine years. That's awesome. Um, you were at my show. Louise says she was at my show a few years ago and freaked out when my belt became a snake. <laughs> still freaks you out. <laughs> that's great. Where do you have, where do you watch the video? That's funny. I like that. All right. So I'm caught up. I missed some questions. I don't even know really how to go back. I could try to go back, but it's going to shake the phone. Um, so Anyway, if I, if I haven't answered your question, fire it, and then maybe I'll answer it. If not, um, okay, I have some questions here. Um, question was, if I had a, this was from last week that I didn't answer. 
uh, if you were uh, able and had successful sh- session with you, why would I not be able to listen to other hypnotists on YouTube? Because I'm very talented at what I do. That's why it matters. You know, hypnotists matter. You can't just say, oh, one hypnotist is just like the other. No, we are not. Okay, why, uh, why did you train in hypnosis? Did you get to know Jerry Kine in person? I did know Jerry Kine. Uh, and um, yeah, so I actually trained at Gil Boyne's school uh, in Los Angeles and Gil passed away probably about 10 years ago. It was one of his last graduating classes. And um, yeah, it was, um, that's, I just trained in hypnosis because it, I felt like it was important for my stage career. That's kind of how it started. Uh, and it turns out that I was um, more right than I knew I was. Um, it becomes very, very important. I think every stage hypnotist should have a hypnotherapy background. Uh, all right. You volunteered twice for my show in Vegas. Oh, you were Mark So Hard, <laughs> the uh, comedy dignitist. That was your porn name. That was wonderful. That's probably one of my favorites. That was very, uh, yeah, that was great. How do I know who's hypnotized deeper than others? Well, understand that hypnosis isn't, when you get hypnotized, you don't just stay hypnotized in a certain level. Hypnosis works a lot like sleep, where you go through cycles. So your light sleep, deep sleep, same thing happens in hypnosis. It becomes cyclical. They're in lighter states, deeper states, depending on one, the suggestions that are happening, uh, how long they've been active. It's almost like when they're doing a routine for too long, I like to put them back into a sleep light hypnotic state as to kind of reconnect them, re-deepen them. Uh, so that matters. So time of the routine matters, the patterns, how cyclical we're going through. So all of it matters. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we, and some people naturally go into hypnosis deeper than others, but there's also a misconception too. I want to keep them in a waking hypnosis state. If I go too, put them too deep into a state of hypnosis, they become very lethargic and then it's not funny. You go, oh wow, they're deeply hypnotized, but you can use them as a doorstop. You know, there's nothing really you can do with them. So it really does matter, um, you know, that you don't want to get them too deep. You want them in a waking state. Uh, all right, um, uh, how's it going? Uh, how are you holding up with the coronavirus? I currently don't have it, or maybe I do and I'm not showing symptoms, fingers crossed, uh, but I think a lot of people are gonna get it, unfortunately. So be safe, be smart, take care of yourselves out there. Uh, and, um, but yeah, this the whole earth is becoming scorched at the moment. And, uh, but we'll get through it. We'll get on the other side of it. Um, just like we do everything else, you know, us humans are, we're resilient, we're like cockroaches. Uh, Betty's asking, Kate, Partner, girlfriend, both. Uh, life partner, business partner, girlfriend. Uh, yeah, she's awesome. Um, so yeah, make sure you follow her. Uh, Kate Sheeler on Instagram. She talks about sex and sex therapy, so only follow her if you're 18. Um, all right. Uh, Kate, if you're on here and you're following live, throw in your Instagram in here so people can see it. Um, so they get the spelling right. Uh, any idea when you will announce, Jimbo's asking if we're going to announce the move to th- uh, move the therapy up or not. Uh, yeah, that also going to depend on what happens. If there's like a national travel ban, then we're going to offer it um, in live stream and going to offer a whole bunch of goodies that come with it that it's going to be, you know, ha- yeah, we'll let you know. We'll keep everyone updated uh, and we're going to make sure that we post it on social media. Any shows on the Strip Council? Yes, Lorev over at Wynn has taken, um, I think, a hiatus through the end of April. And Cirque is meeting today about adjusting schedules and possibly um, going to shorter things. Some shows in my theater have cut the amount of shows that we're offering. I'm probably gonna cut the amount of shows that we're offering. I'm, I'm actually um, supposed to have a meeting later today. Um, and we're kind of, going on the guidance of the Las Vegas Convention and Visitor Authority and the mayor, and there's a whole bunch of moving pieces that, um, you know, kind of help influence what's happening. So we're all connected to each other and all of us entertainers are all talking to each other. And, you know, so it's, yeah, it's happening. Uh, let's see, um, I hypnotize my wife to teach her to relax. A little, a little NyQuil in her wine will help with that. <laughs> Uh, who is the best magician you ever have opened for you? Probably Chris Ewell, uh, who's the one who asked the question. Uh, those are some good days. We had some great times. It was a lot of fun touring around and, and doing that. So uh, maybe we'll have to do it for old time's sake. Next time you come to Vegas, bring your stuff and maybe you can open for a few minutes. Past life regressions. Any experience with that? Yes. I've done some past life regressions. I do have some feelings on it. Um, and we're out of time. 
I'm kidding. Uh, I'll answer it quickly, but yeah, I wanted to keep this only uh, 30, uh, 30 minutes. And we're going to do this more often, but I don't want to keep you guys too long because, uh, you know, it's me blabbing for an hour. Uh, past life regressions, I, we shot a really cool video. One day I might post it, um, but we shot it for a TV company. So I have to figure out the rights to how it all works. So I, I don't know if I can post it yet. So um, anyway, it's really, really cool. I personally am not a fan of past life regressions. However, I find that the subconscious mind can project whatever they need to see from a past life and make it matter in their current life. Most of the therapy I do, I do current life stuff. Uh, but it doesn't mean that past life therapy doesn't work. It's just that it's hard to find the match of what's true and what's not true. But in the end, does it really matter? Not really. If they're having a resolution on what it is that they need to achieve, then great. But I haven't done a whole lot lately. I'm just more of a fan of working with the here and now and stop blaming shit on what you, because you were a stable boy uh, back in the day, let's deal about what your issues are right now. Uh, and uh, so that's more what I do. All right. Uh, okay, Jason's like, Kyle was seen at the end of the class of the month, still doing live class, it's still scheduled. That's not changing unless we get mandated to change it. Then that's the only way it's gonna change, um, I believe. So uh, keep us updated. We're gonna communicate with you guys all uh, for the ones that are registered. Those of you who haven't registered and you wanna jump in, we're offering a live stream now. So now an opportunity for you to jump in and do that. Uh, it's gonna be awesome. So, all right. Uh, yeah, and then Kate, Katie Sheeler, who was my partner that I was talking about, uh, there's her Instagram. I asked her to jump in and put it in, and she did. Okay, I'm going to wrap things up. It's 12.32. That was a quick little 30-minute Ask Me Anything. If you guys like it, you guys like it? You guys want to do it again? You guys want to keep doing it? Um, if you guys like it, then I'll keep doing it if you guys keep showing up. So I um, want to answer any questions about careers and hypnosis and hypnotherapy and um, about my shirt, Lucky Charms. I got it online. Amazon shipped it to me. Uh, so whatever you want to ask. All right, so that uh, will wrap it up. Friday the 13th, uh, keep care of yourselves out there. Be, uh, be healthy and be clean. Wash your hands. Till next time. See you guys. Thanks for stopping in.